friends! So today I wanted to go through with you how I'm propagating some of my herbs. I didn't have very many herbs this year, but I figured out an easy way, actually I didn't figure out, I looked up an easy way <laughs> to make more plants out of the herbs that you love. And I'm doing lavender, and I'm also doing rosemary. And this is actually really simple, it's a lot easier than you think it would be. So I basically have this little makeshift greenhouse that sounds really fancy, but it's just a Tupperware with dirt in it and a Ziploc bag over it. So I'm going to show you how you do this and I'm going to tell you the steps. All you do is you go out and to your favorite herb. This is specifically for rosemary and lavender. So you're going to go out and you're going to trim off a soft part of your lavender plant, which means there's no woody it's not woody and you'll know what to look for. I'm going to show you in just a minute. You're going to cut off three to four inches of that. You're going to strip off about an inch and a half to two inches of the lower leaves. And then you're going to get some really good soil and you're going to put it in a container, whatever kind of container you have. And you're going to stick your lavender down in that. Before you do that, also I should mention, you can actually, after you scrape the leaves off, you can take a butter knife and just gently scrape off some of the outer um, skin so they say that that can make it easier for the lavender plants to take root. You're going to stick it in the dirt and you're going to put this plastic bag over it and it takes about three to four weeks for the lavender plants to take root is what I've heard. You're going to keep it inside, you know, not too hot, not too cool. This is acting like a mini greenhouse. And then after about two or three weeks you're going to start kind of gently tugging on these plants and you know you don't want to tug too hard because you'll damage the roots but if they seem like they're giving you some resistance that means that there's some roots taking place okay so my memory card got full I had to go back and delete some things so I finished so after you're sure that your lavender has taken roots you can just separate them and put them in containers and you can bring them inside or put them outside wherever you want and with rosemary it's a similar process you are going to take the new growth, uh, three to four inches, scrape off the lower leaves, scrape off some of the outer skin if you want to, and then you're going to put it in a container with water for about two inches, just however far you scraped off the leaves. It takes about three or four weeks. You want to keep it in a cool and dark place. And once they start taking roots, you can just put them in containers. You can bring them inside if it's getting closer to winter and overwinter them. And then you can take them outside, or you can go ahead and plant them outside. Rosemary isn't hardy to my zone, so I do have to overwinter it. And that's it. So I'm going to take you guys outside and show you more about how I do this. But first, I wanted to show you guys my beautiful canned peaches. We do have a peach truck that comes around every year, and me and my friend actually got some peaches, and I canned them last night. Uh, the wonderful thing about doing small batches, if you've never done a batch, like if you've never done something like this before, I've never canned peaches, is that if you mess up, it's not too much of a big deal. Even if I really messed up, we'd probably still eat it, but it's not as much pressure, and you also learn something new. So I learned how to can peaches last night. These may not be the best peaches that I ever make. I'm hoping that they are, <laughs> but if I mess up, it's not as big of a deal, I'm not going to be as upset, and it's not as much of a waste of money. So that's a great thing to do. Um, a wonderful thing that Roots and Refuge Farm, uh, Jessica, says is that you need to turn your waiting room into a classroom or something like that. Turn your waiting room into a classroom. This isn't going to be our permanent place. If it was, I'd be content, of course, but I want to learn as much as I can where I'm at right now. So hopefully one day when I have a bigger place or a farm or whatever, I have some of the skills already to do the things that I want to do. So, here we go. Here's the canned peaches. Okay, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to give you guys a cucumber update and I'm going to show you a little bit more of how we cut these to propagate. That's really exciting. Okay, so here's my lavender plant and like I said this is a first year lavender plant so it doesn't really have any woody spots on it and I'm going to try to keep it that way by trimming it back this fall but when you are cutting to propagate 
a new plant, you're just going to take some growth right here and you're going to trim off about three to four inches like I said. And you can also do this with woody stems as well, but I am not doing that so you probably want to look up how to do it that way if that's how you're going to do it. Um, and then you're just going to follow the steps that I've already told you, but this is what it'll look like. And then you'll just trim it and strip off the lower leaves. I finally grew a zinnia, guys. I didn't think I could do it. And here's another pretty one. So sweet. And you're going to do the same thing with the rosemary. You can see where I trimmed off a lot of it to do that. But this has a woody stem, so you're just going to trim off the new growth about three to four inches and strip off the lower leaves and all of the steps that we've already talked about. They're finally starting to blush or turn red. Case actually picked the first red one last night. There it is. I need to eat it? Yeah, I need you to pick that one right there. Pick it very carefully. Not these. Not those, just that one, very carefully. Yeah. Now you can eat it. Okay, yeah, I gotta take that part off. Look yeah. at that, buddy. This is a, a yucky part. Yeah, we don't need that part. Haha, -ha. is it good? You like it? Oh, yeah. I was seeing some of our potatoes. They aren't huge, but they do grow in this container, like I showed you guys. And this is our first year. Growing potatoes in a container like this. Hey, I found another one! Oh, we got a little bitty baby one. So they aren't big, but I'm hoping that there will be enough of these. No, no! Yeah, so they will be good. Woohoo! Look at you! Oh, oh, we found one. one! I found one too! Good job! Put it in there. Okay, so these potatoes need to be cured just like the garlic that we picked a few weeks ago and to do that I'm just putting them on the bottom rack spread out to dry for a few days and then we can store them. I call this redneck ingenuity because look at how trashy <laughs> this <laughs> greenhouse is. I mean cases, there's some cases toys in there. So there we have the garlic. And this greenhouse is literally being held together by duct tape and a prayer. But, you know, next year, hopefully it'll be better. Okay, so I'm back inside. I hope this video was helpful for you all. I hope you enjoyed my little garden update. Um, it was kind of a short video, but I just wanted to give you guys some updates. I've been planning the fall garden and I've been planning what I'm going to be planting in the fall. I just ordered my garlic and this year I'm going to be doing a different variety. I'm going to be doing a silver skin because um, after doing some more research I realized that my variety of garlic that I harvested this year will only last me about six months and since I'm trying to transition over to things that are more hardy, they'll last all year if I need them to. I decided to buy a silver skin variety this year and I buy my garlic from Fillory Farm and I will link the variety that I got below. I've also been looking at Eden Brothers website and it's amazing how you can get lost in all the beautiful flowers and I actually ordered some tulip bulbs and other bulbs and I'll link the varieties that I got to be planted this fall and they're so beautiful. I'll also
plug in some pictures so you guys can see them. And I decided I'm just going to try to propagate some more lavender and rosemary. I, I heard somebody say one time that, you know, propagating should be easy. You're just sticking it in water or dirt and it should be easy, but it's not. <laughs> so, I mean, if this doesn't work out, I'm not going to be too disappointed because I can always try again. That's the main thing. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on what I'm doing and maybe you can try it for yourself. And I wanted to tell you what I've researched. So... You know, you can see if it works for you. I'll be giving you guys updates on this as we go. Um, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to have some success with it. So yeah, the garden is in full swing. We've got tomatoes starting to turn red. We've got sunflowers going crazy. I finally grew a zinnia, which is so exciting. And some of them are already starting to get ready to bloom. So that's awesome. Um, but anyways, tell me in the comments if you guys have ever done this before, if you have any tips for me. Um, like I said, I'm just experimenting and learning as I go, just like you guys are. And hopefully by the end of it, we'll learn something new. So I'll see you guys in my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please subscribe and hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye!